Welcome to, um, welcome to our service this morning. Apologies for the delay. It's all a, a little bit manic uh, this morning. Uh, so today is our sort of uh, junior church uh, prize giving where we sort of give thanks for the junior church and, uh, and what they bring to us. Uh, and so Mark Williams, the, the youth worker from Cobblestone, was meant to be joining us. Unfortunately, he's not very well. Um, so we're having to sort of uh, make do and piece things together a little bit this morning. So do please pray for Mark and his family uh, and also for the rest of us trying to pull a service together this morning. Um, but let's just, uh, let's just join together in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you that uh, we can come this morning to give thanks for the, the work of the junior church, Lord, for the many generations of youngsters that have gone through this church. Thank you that you're still at work, Lord. Um, please be with Mark and his family um, as they're sort of uh, recovering from their illness, Lord. And pray that you'd be with us um, and we would feel you speaking to us this morning, Lord, in whatever we bring. Amen. Okay, we're going to start by singing a couple of songs together. Uh, I think Craig and Lily are going to help us uh, lead a bit of the singing for us. So we're going to start by singing, This is Amazing Grace, and then I Am Who You Say I Am. So yeah, let's please stand and sing.
that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. See, we're getting so good we can all sing different parts of the song at the same time now. So it's good. Um, just uh, a few notices to um, to give out. Uh, so there is a, a meeting for local preachers and worship leaders uh, on the 13th of September, which is this week at Copplestone at 7:30, where Paul Smith's coming to to lead it. So if you're um, anybody who wants to go along to that, please do so. Um, there's also a um, formerly what uh, Gideon's, but uh, to uh, they're, they're inviting you to Devon Central Branch to a 
Friends meeting at Bow Gospel Hall next Saturday at three o'clock, followed by a cream tea. So if you, I'll, I'll leave these out there. But if you'd like to know more um, on that, then um, have a look. A uh, couple of us. One of it is there is a for those who are involved in Fourth Friday feast or anybody who wants to be. There is a meeting to tomorrow morning here at nine thirty just to look at Four Friday Feast over the next few months and uh, what we can do there. Uh, And then also a message here regarding um, Ken Kite's funeral, for those of you who knew him. So that's going to be at 12 noon on Thursday the 14th this September at the Mint Methodist Church in Exeter. Um, So you're welcome to come along, go along to the church and then there will be refreshments at the Safegate Hotel afterwards if people um, want to join that as well. So, um, yeah, that was the, uh, the notices. Um, oh, yes, thanks, Danny. And also for, for the youngsters, there is Roots tonight. That starts up again at 6 o'clock at our place. So if you uh, want to come along, then please do so. Um, okay. Um, actually, no, there's more notices before I forget. So it's also um, a couple birthdays, I believe, today uh, I've been informed of. So I think Mary Lucy, I believe it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. And uh, Iris, I believe this is a special birthday for yourself. So uh, I don't know, am I allowed to say the age? Oh, so Iris is 80 today. So, uh, happy birthday to Iris. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Gordon's got something special planned today, hasn't he? He's cooking lunch, etc. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, we're going uh, to have a little quiz now. Uh, so, even though Mark's not here, he has done a, a, a quiz that he was going to bring to us. So, hopefully, Peter, we'll see how this works on the... Um, Yes, right, so here we go. So it's. So it's four pictures, and uh, you've got to guess the Bible character from the four pictures, okay? Right, so four pictures, and you're going to guess the name. So we'll start with youngsters, and then uh, if, if they can't get it, we'll go to the older youngsters. So let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. Right, so here we are. First picture, we got a bottle of Dove, uh, a little rubber dinghy, Chester Zoo with a giraffe, and umbrella with some rain. Any, any ideas? Well, Charles not allowed that, so because you've seen this one. <laughs> Lily, yes. Noah. It is Noah, yes, indeed. So we have the dove, um, the, the rubber dinghy. I don't think Noah went to Chester Zoo, but he might have had a giraffe on the ark with him. And so lots of rain. So the answer is Noah, yes, very good. Next one, we've got a little sign. Uh, that's, that's a worm in the middle, uh, a boat, and uh, some big waves and a storm. Yes, sir. Moses? No, not Moses. Jonah, yes. Very good. So Jonah, so he was told by God to go to Nineveh, wasn't he? The worm ate up the plant when he was um, hovering there, and then he was on a boat, and there was a big storm. So, yes, very good, Jonah. Okay, this one. We've got a, uh, looks like a fishing net. Number three, a cockerel. Um... A little animal running across the water, which is a bit more of a tricky clue, but any, any thoughts? Yes, sir. It is, yes. Very good. So I, I wasn't, this came from Mark, so I wasn't sure what this one about, but Rachel wrote that it's walking on water, we think. I was like Googling lizard or something like that. I, well, that was in the Bible, but. So, Peter, yeah, very good. Okay, this one, a bit more. A bit easier, maybe. Any of the any of the younger ones? 
Go on then, James. Zacchaeus, yes. Yeah, indeed it is. Okay. Oh, got a little bit of rhyme on it. But hopefully you get the idea. So it's um, so this this P is meant to be over to the side. I don't know why it's dropped down. Uh, so we've got someone writing some letters, um, someone who's blind, a map um, with Damascus as the main sort of point, and then S with a little arrow pointed to a P. Any any thoughts on who that could be? Yes. So it is Saul to Paul. So uh, yeah, very good. He was on obviously on the road to Damascus, and then wrote lots of letters and books afterwards. Um, this one here is maybe a little more tricky. So uh, someone in the in the river seven times. Um, also a I think it's a picture of like a king. And the, the map. Yes, Sonny? Isn't that he's going to have a picture in the end when he gives himself that he's going on a river seven times? It is. Do you know his name? Well, yeah. <laughs> well anybody ever know the name? The person who had to dip himself in the river seven times. It is. Naaman. Okay. This, right, maybe for the younger ones, this one. So. Got some like rushes, a baby in a basket, uh, walking through the desert and the burning bush. Yeah, or who do you reckon? Moses. Yeah, is that what you girls going to say? Moses. Yeah, very good. I'm not sure if this is the last one or not. Uh, okay, so we got, yeah, someone in prison, um, some like sheaves. A uh, sun and moon with stars all around. Any any thoughts for this one? Lily? Lily? Sorry? Joseph. Joseph. Yes, it is. Yeah, I see the brothers. He had a couple of dreams, didn't he, about brothers bowing down to him and the, the moon and the stars. So yes, very good. Uh, right, this one. So we got some stars, some grains of sand. Couple old people. And <laughs> yeah. And someone I don't think he had Google Maps back in the Bible times, but it's someone on a journey somewhere. Any um any thoughts on this one? Yeah. Uh Correct, yes, well done. So it, it said about uh, his descendants be like as many of the stars in the sky, the grains of sand, etc. Um, and Abraham was quite old at some point in his life. <laughs> as we all know. Uh, right, I think this is the last one. I say this every time. So, David, is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, well done. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's so. That's our quiz. Just some Bible characters. Thank you, Peter. Um, right. Just um, so Mark was going to be thinking about sort of uh, looking ahead uh, and new starts. Um, so, albeit we've slightly changed the Bible reading, but just a reading I wanted to share this morning, as we sort of think about where the youngsters, whether they're going back to school, different classes, etc. Uh, so if you could have the Philippians by reading up, Peter, if that's right, please. So just um, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So there are going to be a lot, there may be lots of challenges for, for you guys as youngsters, where you go to different classes, schools, etc., going forwards. But it's important to remember to try not to be anxious and to, to always, um, yeah, go to God with what your requests are, and he can help you along the way. Right, we're going to um, sing another couple of songs now. Um, so the first one is In Christ Alone, and then 
Um, my Lighthouse. Yeah, that's standards.
Right, okay. Um, Andy is now going to come and lead us in a little bit of uh, time of uh, prayers and sharing. Maybe. Thank you, Andy. Just checking exactly what I'm doing. Right, it's fine. Um, morning, everyone. Uh, I thought it was as a family service this morning. It's really good to share as a, a larger Heal Lane family um, what God's doing in our lives, uh, things we want to celebrate, maybe things we want to say thank you for, as well as um, those things where we're asking for help from God. So um, what I thought we'd do is just spend a few minutes, uh, just get together in small groups, um, share either, well, try and think of things you can celebrate Um, God with or give thanks to God for as well as often our needs as well Um, just share with each other uh, and then we'll spend a few minutes in prayer after that okay so um, get into groups then I'll give you a few minutes and then I'll tell you when we should think about praying Uh, young people you can share at the back together try and avoid just a general catch-up of what's gone in your week try and really focus on what it is that you want from God today okay so that makes sense brilliant go for it Okay, everyone, start thinking about um, bringing those celebrations or thanks or requests to God in prayer now, please. Okay, everyone, if you want to bring it to a close, um, feel free to carry on after the service. If there are particular issues that you want to pray through, um, leaders will be available as well. But um, thank you for that. Hopefully that was helpful. Stu. Thanks, Andy. Um, okay, so at very short notice, um, Daniel has uh, scrabbled together a, a children's talk, I believe. So, thank you very much, Dan. This this was really short notice, um, about half seven or so when the phone rang. I thought it was going to be the sheep broken out. I would have rather had that phone call, I think, probably. Um, so first of all, I need to apologize when I stand up here. Um, Kirsty, uh, I feel like it's my job to uh, embarrass my sort of family at most times. So she was like, you shouldn't stand up there because you haven't had a haircut and you need a haircut and you look really, really bad. <laughs> so sorry about that. I, I know I haven't had a haircut. There's a reason why I haven't had a haircut. It's, it's slightly more... But well, there's several reasons. Firstly, it just seems we've been too busy to get a haircut. Secondly, uh, I don't know about you've all got siblings. Okay, you're slightly competitive. I grew up um, with I got three brothers, and I, my two grandparents. One of them I've never known my grandparent to have any hair. One granddad was bald from like the time I ever knew him, and I've never seen a picture of him with any hair. And as kids growing up, we used to watch Last of the Summer Wine, and he was Compo, and we would call him Compo, and he was fine with that, and he was just like, he was a mischievous character. He was prisoner of war camp. Whenever he babysit, he'd do all the things that grandparents shouldn't do when they're babysitting. He'd take us to betting shops. He'd, he'd do everything that he shouldn't do. But he was such a laugh and so much fun. And the other granddad, he had lots of hair, and even to the day he died, he, he still had a full head of hair. Um, and he loved us, and he was the one that, when I was 10, decided he'd just teach me to drive a tractor. Just He'd do like things, other things with us, but he wouldn't have fun in the same way. But I got three brothers. My other three brothers are losing their hair fairly rapidly, to the extent where they probably have really lost most of their hair. So I like to think that over the summer I was going to see them, so I want to let my hair grow as long as possible, sort of to rub it in a little bit, because it was a little bit of a sibling rivalry, the fact that I haven't lost my hair. When I have my hair cut, my son does seem to take the mickey out of me that he feels he can see my receding hairline when my hair's cut, which is the other reason why I haven't had my hair cut. Because it's... Uh, anyway, so that's by the by. That's nothing to do with the children's talk at all. That was just an apology that I'm stood up here and my wife thinks I shouldn't be stood up here because I haven't had my hair cut. But there you go. I'm going to move this to one side a little bit if I can. Okay, so... When Rachel rang me this morning and said that Mark couldn't come, and I said, but do you know what he was going to speak on? And she said, well, Edward knows because he's doing the Bible reading this morning. And I said, well, I've been working with Edward all week, and he hasn't said nothing about he's doing the Bible reading this morning. I said, did this happen last night? 
She said, no, I text him on Thursday. <laughs> so since Thursday, it was known. Is, so I said, well, you happen to know the Bible reading because even though he lives in my house, I've not heard anything about uh, said Bible reading. So anyway, she, she told me the Bible reading and we had a quick Google and there was a back to school type thing that linked in the Bible reading. So I thought that'd be quite a good one. So how many of you have started new schools this week? Not new school? And have you started new school? Ollie, did you start a new school? Daisy started a new school? And you have, Ruben? Good, good. And Felix, did you start a new school? Yeah? Okay, Edith, did you start a new school? She disappeared? Okay, yeah, she has. Okay, how many of you have just come back to the same school, but a different year, different teacher maybe? Yeah? Yeah, okay, it's a bit different, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit like there's a, a lot to get, home, uh, get your head around. So we're going to think about what it means to go back to, God, go back to school with God. Okay, but first thing, I need some people, because I'm going to try and tie this into a Bible reading. So I need maybe three volunteers, okay? But the issue is, I need the three volunteers to be fairly smaller volunteers. Okay, so I could do, ideally do with three smaller type of people. Okay, so I've got Arthur putting his hand up, and Emmeline and Jessica putting a hand. Oh, Ollie, you got your... Oh, yeah, I'm going to go with... Okay, I'm going to go with Lucy, Ollie, and Ruben. And you'll see why in a minute, okay? So if you, can you come up here? I'm going to have to read this through because I haven't had time to. Are you happy to come up on the stage? Is that all right? Stand on this side, maybe. That's why I moved to. Yeah? Ruben, you come up with Ollie? Right. Okay, so the, the Bible reading that Edward was basing this on was the fisherman going out in the boat. Now, the only boat I could find for three fishermen to fit into was this, was this Lego boat. Edith, you come in? Cool. Okay. Right. So I feel like we've either got to make this boat bigger or the other option is we try to shrink you four. Now, back in the 80s, because I'm, I'm really old, my kids tell me I'm really old. And have you ever seen the film, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Have you ever seen that film? Where the dad makes this crazy invention that shrinks the children down to they're about that small. Ever seen that? Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, right, we'll close our eyes and we'll see if we can either make ourselves smaller or the boat bigger. Okay? Ready? Go. Right, think smaller, think smaller, think boat bigger, boat bigger. Do, you, do any of you feel like you're getting any smaller? You feel like you are? Ollie thinks he is getting smaller. Okay, we'll see how we go. Okay, right, open our eyes. Okay, we've got a bigger boat instead. Right? <laughs> that seems like an easy option. Do you reckon, you, Edith, you up for going in this boat? Standing in a boat? No? We'll see how many of us we can fit in this boat. Okay? So you have got to just, you have to sort of stand relatively, no, you have to stay stood up, we're never going to fit in. Okay? Just don't tread on each other's toes. Okay? There's, one, there's enough space for these. Why not? <laughs> right, we got Ottilie and Felix trying to fit in here as well. Ottilie, you probably fit in. Beside. Okay. So I need you to embrace your inner disciple, okay? So I'm going to talk through the story a little bit. And as much as you can, without knocking each other out, I want you to try and act this out a little bit, okay? Okay. Right. Right, so the disciples were fishermen, okay, and this is just after they'd met Jesus and when Jesus had been risen, okay, and they'd had, they'd had a intense time, so they decided they're going to go out for the night fishing in the boat, okay, so can you maybe be a bit rowing, do a bit of rowing in the boat, maybe a little bit, yeah, okay, so they were experienced, experienced fishermen, they knew that it was hot during the day, they could go out in the night and it wouldn't be so warm, okay? So you can be a little bit cold, a bit shivery, because you're a bit cold, yeah? Yeah? Oh, no, okay, just, just do row instead then, okay? <laughs> right? Okay, then they decided to stop rowing and then they were going to throw the nets over the side of the, the boat, okay? Throw nets out. Let's all go one side, okay? Because that helps with the rest of the Bible story, okay? Right? Okay. And so after they threw the nets down and they, I don't know, had a sing-song maybe or something, then they would try pulling the nets back in, okay? So try pulling the nets back in, okay? But they were empty. 
Okay, that was a bit depressing. So they'd maybe row a little bit more, a bit more rowing. Okay, and then they try throwing the nets down again. Oh, okay, right. Uh, try pulling them back up again after a little sing song. Oh, they're still empty. Okay, let's row a bit more. Let's try rowing a bit more. They're starting to get tired at this point, a lot of rowing. It's quite late at night. Okay, let's throw our nets down once more. Have a little sing song. Pass the time of day, look on Instagram, anything like that they used to do. Okay, don't fall out. Okay, try pulling the nets up again. Still empty. Okay, so at this point they think, well, I'm going to give up. Let's start rowing for the beach. So start rowing for the beach. Okay, they're rowing for the beach. Now they get near the shore, and then all of a sudden they see somebody on the beach. Okay. Wow. Okay. Right. So on hearing this, they thought they'd go with a man, so they tried throwing the nets on the other side of the boat. Had a little sing song, checked Instagram, etc., and then pulled them up. Only this time, the nets weren't empty. This time, the nets were really, really full. So they had to work really hard pulling them up. Okay, really, really hard. Okay. And now the boat was completely full. Okay, so now they're happy and they're cheerful. Yeah, can we do happy and cheerful? Yeah. Okay, so then they row back to the shore to meet the man to say thank you. Very good, okay. All right, so now we're back on the shore. You can all get out of the boat if you want to get out of the boat. We're out knocking each other out. Okay. No, you stand, you need to get out of the boat. Okay. When they got, no, don't, don't, don't disappear, don't disappear. So when they got on the shore, when they got on the shore and they, and they met the man and they realized it was Jesus, Jesus had already lit a fire. So we can't pretend there's a fire here in the middle of the one. Okay, don't get too close, you might burn yourself, right? And they all decided to sit around the fire and then Jesus, and then they took some of the fish that they caught and they cooked it and they had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they had breakfast there on the beach. Okay, so what I wanted to remember this, okay, Peter and his friends, they were out on the boat, and when they needed Jesus' help, Jesus was there to help, yeah? And then, when they performed the miracle, and they got back to the, the beach, that wasn't over, okay? That wasn't the miracle done. Jesus hadn't disappeared. He hadn't done his miracle and disappeared. He wanted to stay there. He wanted to be friends with them, and he wanted to have breakfast with them. So, what I want us to try and remember, this week, as we go back to school and we do more of these things that maybe seem a bit different, in the morning, when we're having our breakfast, it might not be cornflakes, it might be, what's the breakfast of choice? My, my breakfast of choice is shreddy, I'll admit. Breakfast of choice, what do we go for? Cocoa Pops? Shreddies? Oh, good. What, what, Ruben, what's your breakfast of choice? Porridge. Porridge, okay. I have, see, I have, this is where I'm really bad, okay. I have shreddies at 4 o'clock, and then I have porridge at 10 o'clock. Okay, but there you go. Uh, Ollie, what, what do we go for for breakfast? Cheerios, okay. Cheerios. Yeah. Edith, what do we go for? Don't know? Okay, so beside it. Now, Edward, he'll have Weetabix, okay, but Edward's Weetabix is quite particular. You can only open Weetabix if you open it with a pair of scissors very straight. You cannot rip, a, you cannot rip the Weetabix open. That is like... <laughs> <laughs> there will be trouble in our house if the weed is ripped open. <laughs> and then I think the milk is almost measured to the millimeter. Milliliter. To go with. Anyway, so uh, we all have different things. But when we're having our breakfast this week, I want us to have our breakfast and remember that Jesus wants to be our friend and he wants to be there for us. And then we're going to school. A bit like when the disciples were in a boat and they needed Jesus' help. Jesus can be there for each of us when we're in times of maybe anxiety or feeling a bit out of our comfort zone or feeling a bit tired and weary because we've thrown our nets down several times. We haven't caught anything. We've almost had enough. We don't know if we can carry on. Jesus can be there for us and he, he, he can perform many miracles. So he can definitely help us to get for a day at school. Okay? So, and he can definitely... You've just stepped in the fire. I'm really worried about you burning your toes, okay? All right, it can definitely help us, okay? So thank you very much for helping me.
you can all go back and sit down, okay? Thank you very much, and try and remember that this week as you go about your school. Are you are you handing I give them to you and you hand out? Somebody, somebody. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, now apparently I'm doing the prize giving. Uh, so all of our young people, we value you coming uh, every week very much. Um, so we like to do something uh, each year um, to celebrate. So we have some gifts. Okay, so because we are short of a preacher and we maybe need to drag this out, we'll clap each one individually because that'll make it last a bit longer, okay? So first of all, we've got Arthur. Steven. Okay. Ollie. <laughs> Ruben. Okay, Ruben. Edith. Edith. Take Jonies. Jonies as well, is that right? Because I don't think Jonie is going to walk up here. Is that right? Not this morning. Okay. Thank you. Lucy. Okay, Lucy. Evie. Oh, Evie's hit milestone. Bible. Evie. Take the left hand. Oliver. You're Oliver. Ollie, Dana. Daisy. Daisy. Jessica. Jessica. Give him a kiss, Jess. Emily. Emily. Lily. Oh, secondary school. Lily. Sophie. Sophie. Charlotte. Seb. Okay, and Edward is now reached the milestone age of 18, so he's been kicked out here at the top of Junior Church, okay? So you're going to have the pleasure of his company, start working at PowerPoint desk and other stuff, okay? Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Okay, and Felix and Anthony. Oh, you can take the boat, thanks. Okay, we're just going to uh, finish with singing one song uh, together now, but uh, before we do, we're just, um, obviously, Ed heads off to, to uni as well, so whilst he's got a little gift as well, we'll, um, we tend to, as a church, we'll just pray for him, albeit he's maybe not moving away, um, hopefully he'll still be around, but um, we'll pray for Ed as he heads off to uni and embarks on a new life there, and then... Uh, 
Yeah, we'll see. Lord, we just uh, thank you for Fred and the, um, the involvement he's had in junior church over a number of years, Lord. We just pray you'd be with him. He steps out to uni and that he finds um, some Christian friends, Lord, and able to um, enhance his sort of relationship with you, Lord, in a different environment. Amen. And we're gonna we're gonna close by singing the blessing um, as a way of sort of I think as a church we're blessed with the the young people we've got here um, in that they're sort of they turn up they smile they get involved thank you to the the young ones who have been uh, helping with the music group today um, and also blessed by the the leaders uh, in the junior church we have that turn up each week to 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 teach the youngsters about Jesus and help them in in their relationship so. Yeah, we'll close by singing the blessing. Let's stand and sing. Uh, there's tea and coffee after the service so please feel free to stay around um, let's just pray as we close Lord thank you that um, you were with us yesterday, today and forever Lord you've um, helped and been with many children and youngsters that have gone through junior church Lord and we pray you continue to do that and that you will be with uh, these guys, as they face their new challenges, whether it's school, college, university, whatever it might be, Lord, that you'd be with them and that they know that it can turn to you um, to help them in their, their journeys and that they can uh, build a stronger relationship with you, Lord. Amen.